Hey, welcome back to another episode of Math with Mr. Warren. Today we are talking about, oops, subtracting integers. Let's see if I can get that all written out. There you go. Subtracting integers. On the last video, we talked about adding integers. Today we're going to talk about subtracting. You may be asking, well, what's the difference? Well, there's not a lot of difference, but I am going to show you something new that we didn't see in the last video. So hopefully you'll see something that you haven't seen before. And if you have, this will just be uh, refreshing your memory. All right, so let's get into it. First problem I want to talk about, since hopefully you already know how to add integers with different signs, is what if you're given a problem like, I don't know, 5 minus negative 7? What are we doing with that? Okay, one of the things I like to do, and I know I'm not a good artist, but one of the things I like to do is to draw out this idea. Okay, this is my example of a hot air balloon. Okay, so I know. Bear with me. This is not the best example. Here's your little flame that goes through the middle, right? All right, so there's a hot air balloon. Anybody that's ever seen a hot air balloon, I've never been in one, so I don't know exactly what it's like, but if you've seen one, you might know, at least from the Wizard of Oz movie, if you've seen that, um, that there are sandbags sitting on the side. So I want you to imagine we've got a sandbag sitting here on the side of the hot air balloon. Okay, now let's, let's think about this, right? The hot air balloon is being pumped up with, with fire, right? That produces some kind of a gas. I don't know how to explain this because I'm not a sciencey person, but it produces gas which makes the hot air balloon rise up, right? The more hot air you put in there, the higher it goes. And so this idea that, that that hot air is making it move up, now, well, let's talk about what happens with the sandbag. What does the sandbag do to the hot air balloon? Well, the sandbag essentially makes it come down, right? So I want you to imagine if the sandbag, so let me, let me say it this way. A sandbag is kind of like a negative, right? In other words, it's bringing the, the hot air balloon down. So we're going to call that a negative. Okay, now I'm going to try not to blow your mind here, but, but bear with me. What happens if you get rid of the sandbag? Okay, um, so do you understand what I'm saying? Like if, if I drop the sandbag off of the hot air balloon, what ends up happening? Does the hot air balloon go down or does it go up? Well, hopefully you're saying it goes up and I would say, exactly it's going to go up, right? So what did we do when we dropped out the sandbag? What we did is we subtracted, right? I subtracted a sandbag. Well, now remember here, I said a sandbag is the same as a negative. So really what I'm doing is I'm taking away a negative, okay? Do you see where I'm going with this? If I'm taking away a negative, what's actually happening to the hot air balloon? Remember, it's going up. So am I subtracting the elevation of the hot air balloon? No, I'm adding elevation. So when we have a problem like this, five minus negative seven, I want you to think of that visual of I'm dropping the sandbag, I'm subtracting what is already considered a negative, right? Something that's already bringing you down. When I take that off, it's now putting me back up. So five minus seven is the same as five plus seven, okay? Does this make sense? So five plus seven gives us the answer of 12, okay? So in other words, what I'm saying here is we can't subtract a negative, right? But if we, if we wanna believe that we can, then understand that subtracting a negative means that we're really adding a positive, right? Those two negatives don't go together. Let me give you another analogy or another example. Think of two magnets, right? If you've ever, see, ever seen a magnet, you know that there are two sides of a magnet, okay? There's the positive side and there's the negative side, right? This generally is the positive side, I think, if I remember right, and the blue is generally the negative side. Now, what happens when you try to put two magnets together when they're both negative? Well, if you've ever tried to do that, you'll know that it pushes apart, right? It doesn't want to go together. What it wants you to do is to flip the other magnet so you have a positive and negative together. The negatives don't go together, okay? Same thing here. The negatives don't go together. So two negatives are going to make a positive. Okay. Let's see if we can do another example and hopefully we'll make sense of this, okay? So 
Example number two. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch it up a little bit on you. So let's start with uh, negative 24. And let's go ahead and subtract negative 17. Okay, now, automatically you're gonna see this is a bit of a challenge, right? So we have negative 24 minus negative 17. Now hopefully you're thinking, well, since we, when we subtracted a negative before, it really meant we added, it's gonna be the same thing here. And here's what I would tell you to do. When you see two negatives together like that, what I would tell you to do is to go ahead and, and put plus signs. Just make them a positive. So now what we have is negative 24 plus 17. Then we go back to what we did in the last video, okay? Since I have two different signs, I'm gonna go ahead and subtract the two so I get seven. Now, your answer is gonna be dependent on which of the, the numbers had the higher absolute value. In other words, which was the bigger number? Which was further from zero? Well, the negative number was further from zero. Therefore, my answer is negative seven. All right, let's go ahead and look at another example here. Now I'm gonna change it up on you a little bit. You notice we're, we're progressing through this, right? Started out with a positive subtracting a negative, then I went to a negative subtracting a negative. Now what I wanna do, cause you're gonna see this show up, this is more algebra. But let's talk about this idea. If I do X minus Y, okay. Now here's the challenge with this because generally when we give you an, an expression like this, X minus Y, we're gonna tell you what the X value is and what the Y value is. So in this example, we're gonna set X to be negative 23, okay? And I'm gonna set Y to be 19. Now, all I need to do is plug these values in for those variables, okay? Now, please don't think that X is always negative 23 and Y is always 19. It, those are just the values in this instance, okay? So we're going to replace X with negative 23. So here's what I'm gonna do. So hopefully it makes sense. I'm gonna put that in parentheses, okay? In red, I'm gonna leave that. And then in parentheses, we're gonna change Y out with 19. So do you see how all I did is I changed the X and I changed the Y value to the values that we were given. Now we can go ahead and solve. Now notice, just like what we did with the last video, when if we have two of the same signs, we're going to be adding, and you may be going, but they're not the same signs. Okay, so I want you to think about this. If we're looking at a number line here, think about what happens when, I don't know, let's say I'm starting at five and I'm subtracting. Which direction do I go on the number line when I subtract? Hopefully you're saying to the left, right? You'd be right, we're going to the left when I subtract. So if I'm on a number line, um, well, let me, let me move, I've got a toolbar down here. Let me move this just so I can see some of my tools. Um, let me go ahead and, and take away that last line. Okay, so let's say that we're at negative 23 here, right? Okay, I start at zero, I go down to negative 23. Now, just like if I was at five and I subtracted, I went left. This is gonna be the same idea. If I'm at negative 23, I'm gonna subtract 19. So what am I really doing? What I'm really doing here is I'm saying it's negative 23 plus negative 19. I think I mentioned this on the last video, right? That you're not really subtracting anything, you're adding the opposite. So whether I subtract a positive 19 or I add a negative 19, it does the same thing. Now, I prefer to write it as is adding a negative 19 because it helps me keep everything in, in order a little bit better. And now they're the same term. So now I know all I'm doing is adding those two numbers together. So I have 23 plus 19, right? Which is gonna give me 42. Now, because they're both negatives, or you could say because I started with a negative and subtracted, either way, my answer is going to be negative 42, which hopefully makes sense, right? If I start at negative 23, and I'm moving to the left, then that means I'm getting further away from zero, which increases the size of my number and gives me a negative 42, okay? So I hope that makes a little bit of sense. We're gonna look at another example here, um, and we're gonna start at, uh, we're gonna start at something a little bit different. Um, I want you to, in this case, find the distance between two numbers, and if you remember, in my previous videos when I taught sixth grade, 
We talked about finding the distance if we were looking on a grid, right? You guys know what the four quadrants are? So I'm looking for the distance between, let's say, point A and point B, right? This is A and B. Um, all we had to do is subtract. Do you remember doing that? So finding the distance generally is just subtracting between two numbers. Now, it's going to be a little bit different here, though, because I want to know the distance between negative 4 and 5, okay? So um, for the sake of argument, let's say negative 4 is, I don't know, right here, and let's say 5 is right here, okay? Now, it's, it's not as simple as just subtracting negative 4 from positive 5, is it? I don't know. Let's try it. So let's do 5 minus negative 4. Let's see what we get. Okay, now I know that from here to here, the distance is 5, and I know from here to here, the distance is 4, and so if I add those together, it's 9, right? So if I write it out like this, 5 minus negative 4, remember the example with the hot air balloon? Remember, um, subtracting a negative is the same as adding. It's opposite, right? So really what I've done is 5 plus 4, which also gives me 9. So the distance between negative 4 and positive 5 gives me positive 9. Distance generally is, is a positive number. I don't think we use negative numbers. I don't know if we ever do. Let's try another one just for the heck of it because I think this is good practice. Let me go ahead and erase some of what I have here. Okay. So in this example, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to do, uh, let's see. Let's do negative 9 and 8. Okay, so what's the difference between negative 9 and 8? This is the same idea. Now, could I do negative 9 minus 8? No, because then I'm going to get a negative number and distance is always positive. So I'm going to do 8 minus negative 9. Okay? Now, by doing that again, I can't subtract a negative, so I'm going to add its opposite. So that gives me 8 plus 9, which is 17. So in other words, the distance there is 17 units. Okay? All right, I think I've got one more example. This involves a, uh, a picture. Do you hear my dogs wrestling in the back of this video? <laughs> They're getting really loud now. Okay, so here's my example. This is supposed to be a mountain. We're going to go down into a valley. All right. I think that's pretty good. I need to draw a dotted line across here. Let's see if I can do that. Eh, not terribly straight, not terribly horrible. Okay. So the top of this mountain right here, uh, let's call this mountain Mount Whitney. Okay. And um, Mount Whitney is 14,000. I want to make sure I get the number right. 494 feet off of sea level, okay? Now this right here is sea level. Okay, so 14,494 feet off of sea level. And then uh, this place called Death Valley, these are both places in California. Um, Death Valley is negative 282 feet, right? That means it's below sea level. Now, it doesn't mean it's underwater. If you've ever been to Death Valley in California, it's a very hot place. It's also not underwater. Uh, but it is really low elevation. So if I want to know the distance between um, the top of Mount Whitney here, I'll just go ahead and write this so we know this is Mount Whitney, okay? The distance between the top of Mount Whitney and the bottom of Death Valley would be what? How do we find that? So here's what we do. We're going to take the distance or the height of Mount Whitney, and we're going to subtract the height of Death Valley. You may be going, well, how is that the height? That's underground. Well, it's not underground, but we're still going to call it the height, even though it's at a negative. So if I want to know the distance between the two, what I'm essentially doing is I'm adding those two together. So remember, we can't subtract a negative. We're going to add the opposite. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I cannot do this in my head. Let me go ahead and set this up over here just so I know that I get the right number here because I don't have a calculator next to me. All right. So 14,776 feet is the distance from the top of Mount Whitney all the way down to the bottom of Death Valley. That's, a, that's quite a bit of distance, right? So that's how we would find the distance between two points. And this is where really finding the distance is the most valuable 
um, because if you're going on a hike and you're starting a low elevation and you're going up past sea level, it might be good to know the total distance that you've gone. Um, but hey, that does it for our video today. That's all I wanted to show you. Hopefully this makes sense. I'm trying to teach you the foundations for how to subtract integers. In the coming videos, we're going we're gonna to look at multiplying integers, dividing integers, and then we're going to get into the really tough stuff. This is going to be a challenge. We're going to talk about fractions, everybody's favorite, and we're going to get into some decimals. Okay? And I challenge you throughout all these videos in this unit to not use a calculator. As you saw in here, I did not bust out the calculator. I did this all longhand. Um, it's much better to set a foundation, and trust me, you're going to thank yourself later when you know how to do this without a calculator, because then it makes it that much easier when you get to use one. All right, guys, that does it for today. My dogs are still wrestling in the background. Hopefully you can't hear that too bad, but thank you for uh, joining me on the video. I'll see you on the next one.